Even though it was mentioned, the contract for the property has already been terminated. Exactly what do you mean by that? Mom suggested we cancel the lease, so we did it together while you were on your work trip, replied my husband. What the heck? Being among these individuals is becoming too much for me to bear. Karen, my mother-in-law, believed I would give up as a result of this apartment's lease ending. At this point, you have no option but to move in with us. She scoffed. But I'm not going to give up. I have no desire to. You're his wife, so you have to. My mother-in-law forced me. Then I'll divorce him and end things. I'm a 30-year-old office worker named Olivia. A year ago, my husband, Liam, and I got married. We began collaborating on multiple occasions, and the firms we work with are business partners. We grew rather close through our professional encounters. We started dating after we had private encounters. We married a year later. Even after getting married, we remained joyful. Living together, Liam is a humorous and upbeat man, and we laugh a lot every day. I was thrilled to be married to such a beautiful person and enjoyed my new married life immensely. However, I was unaware that Liam had a side like that. For the first time, Liam and I celebrated New Year's at his family's place six months after we were married. I hadn't spent much time with my in-laws up until then because we only occasionally went to see them for a short while. However, their arrival on New Year's Eve offered me a peek at who they really were. My sisters-in-law and parents-in-law were all at the New Year's celebration. It was as though I was attending their family reunion in its entirety. My other sister-in-law, Sophia, has a husband and a little boy named Jack, whom she brought over, while her husband had gone back to live with his parents, and my sister-in-law, Emma, is still unmarried. Up until today, I had no negative feelings about my parents-in-law. Like Liam, they seemed cheerful and approachable to me. I thought our talk would be casual and enjoyable, but it didn't turn out that way. Hey, Olivia, can you help me a little? Of course. I hurried over when my mother-in-law, Karen, called out to me into the kitchen. Karen gave me a chilly look as her smile vanished out of nowhere. You move so slowly. Normally, I wouldn't have needed to ask you for help. You should have insisted on lending a hand around here on your own. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I had upset her, so I freaked out. I did everything in my power to assist the family and win back Karen's trust. Still, Karen would not stop criticizing me. Now stop acting like a spoiled child just because Liam is kind to you. Huh? After getting married, most people concentrate on starting a family. However, why do you continue to work for the company? Uh, well, Liam allows me to keep working at the company. Isn't that the reason why you whined about it? You make an awful wife. You come over to our place and do nothing but sit in the living room. It's unbelievable that all you do is anger Liam by doing what you want. No, I... Karen continued to criticize me in this severe way, and I felt horrible about it. Next, Emma, one of my sisters-in-law, entered the kitchen. Thank God. Since Emma and I had previously had pleasant chats, I anticipated having her support. Emma did, however, mention something that surprised me. Wow, Olivia, your cooking seems really poor. What? Compared to Mom's meals, everything appears so different. Does Liam consume this kind of food every day? It really is similar to leftover food. It stunned me. Emma and Karen both spoke extremely hurtful things to me that they had never uttered before. I became puzzled as to why they had both turned so cruel in an instant. What I had anticipated as a fun New Year's celebration at my parents-in-law's house quickly turned into a terrible experience for me. I didn't appreciate it at all, even after the food was brought in and the feast started. Karen and Emma mostly discussed things that my in-laws would be familiar with. I felt left out and uninvited to participate in the talk, but Liam didn't appear to notice or care. It was as if he was unaware of the circumstances. However, I was shocked to see Liam appear to support his mother. 
Reluctantly, he said, Karen probably assumed you knew, surprised me with his lack of encouragement. I felt deceived. Liam was aware that his mother had not requested me to take such action. Karen's accusations were not as painful as his silence. Liam's remark, You are a really lousy wife, you know that. His words hit me like a slap in the face. You did things to hurt my family. No way, I argued, believing that I had been unfairly maligned. Emma interrupted Liam while he was speaking, saying, Thank goodness I bought a cake for such a time like this. Her cake appeared, and suddenly Jack's glum expression brightened up. Yay, it's my cake. That's my daughter, Karen said with pride. You've been prepared for this to happen. Karen grinned broadly as she gave Emma praise. Emma said, Olivia is really out of it, so I ordered it just in case. I realized that they had purposefully set up this scenario to make me appear bad. When I told them I hadn't purchased the cake, I wondered how they would take it. I became aware that there was no one in this room to support me as they kept accusing me. Even Liam, the person I thought would stand up for me, made a ridiculous comment. Jack was also moved to tears by your words. You had better go home today as a punishment. Huh? I was hearing things that I couldn't believe. Don't think that someone who caused so much trouble will get a free meal and cake, Liam grumbled. Karen, Sophia, and Emma joined in when Liam stated that, pushing for me to go. Having no other option, I regrettably left. Since Sophia's place was far away, I took a cab to the bus stop and endured a 30-minute ride to get home. I was mad that I went there. I chose the gift during my workday. I long to return to that time. Liam spent the night at his parents' house that evening, rather than going back to his own. When Liam returned the next day, I tried to find out what was going on, but he was serious about talking to me. As soon as Liam got home, he said, You know, I heard that you were harassing Karen and Emma. What? How come? What topic are you discussing? Feeling the weight of his charge, I argued, You can't truly believe this. And the same goes for that birthday cake issue, Liam said, accusingly. My mother requested that you get it for that day. You couldn't have forgotten anything so crucial without intention. How much do you despise my family? You are a horrible wife, honestly. I was hearing things that I couldn't believe. Not only was Liam accusing me, but he was also siding with his mother on this issue. Now wait a minute, so you don't believe me? I protested, getting irritated and raising my voice. And what about you, if you're going to charge me with horrible things? You pretended to be the one who chose Jack's gift when in reality it was mine. Since it was a gift from the two of us, I didn't believe telling Sophia about it would make a difference. I glanced at Liam, thinking he would get it, but his attitude was cold and indifferent. I was wounded and deceived by his lack of assistance. Put another way, Liam appeared determined to present a good picture of himself to his family and hold me responsible for all the problems. I felt no love or affection for him because of the way he behaved. If this kept up, I started to think very seriously about getting a divorce. As I was thinking about it, something unanticipated happened that made my choice clear. For around three days, I had gone on a business trip and had no idea what was going on at home. Upon my return, I discovered Liam's stuff neatly organized in cardboard boxes. I was taken aback and puzzled because I didn't know why this was occurring. I immediately dialed Liam in the hopes of getting an explanation. With a sudden reply, he said, I'm on my way. I'll be heading back home shortly, and hung up. When Liam finally got home, I was furious because I had no idea what was going on. I was surprised to see Emma, Karen, and Sophia there as well. Hey, Liam, what does this mean? Why are these cardboard boxes filled with all of your belongings? And why are Emma, Karen, and Sophia present? I yelled, my voice full of confusion and rage. Liam gave a smug smile. We're moving out. What? Where should I move? 
Unable to understand what he was saying, I inquired. It's apparent, isn't it? We're moving to my mom's place, Liam answered calmly. What? Hey, hold on a second. Why are you acting alone in making this decision? I yelled in rage. Karen cut me off before I could say anything more. You are not entitled to make choices regarding this residence. Karen's strong comments sliced through the air. You should stop being a child, grow up, and follow what Liam decides, she added. Karen's claim had nothing to do with my immaturity. I was not going to give in this time. Liam, what are you even saying? We are a married couple. We need to talk it out and make the right decision for ourselves, I firmly said. Karen appeared astonished by my reply. Even if you say so, I already terminated the contract for this apartment, okay? What? What do you mean? Puzzled, I asked. Mom said we needed to break the lease, so we went and did it all together while you were on your business trip, Liam stated lightly. No way! I couldn't believe what I was hearing, so I whispered. It was true that Liam had the right to end the apartment lease without my knowledge because it was in his name. However, I never thought he would carry it out without first talking to me. Being among such people was becoming too much for me to bear. It felt like an impossible position. Karen, my mother-in-law, appeared to think that breaking the lease on the flat would push me to give up and move in with them. You have no choice but to move in with us now, she said with confidence. However, I was determined. I'm not going to give up. I'm not moving in with you, I firmly said. What are you talking about? Shot back Karen. You must since you are his wife. You're saying that just because I'm the wife I have to accept? With mounting frustration, I inquired. Yes, exactly. Karen replied in an unwavering tone. Then I'll get a divorce from him, I abruptly said. Liam seemed astonished. Wait a second. Are you stating that you wish to have a divorce? Are you for real? If I weren't serious, I wouldn't be saying this. I'm tired of you and your relatives. Let us simply live our own lives apart, I said, with a sudden burst of resolve. Liam went pale and appeared to be at a loss for words. Suddenly, Sophia and Emma, who had been watching quietly, stepped in. Wait a minute. I won't approve you for the divorce. That's true if you don't come and live with us back at home. Who is going to take responsibility for taking care of our father? Yeah? Taking care of your dad? Their stupidity lets them tell the truth. Emma gave me an embarrassed look when I said that. Now I know, that's exactly what you were looking for when you all quickly tried to make me live together with you guys. It seems that my father-in-law fell down the stairs recently and needs nursing care, I said, trying to piece together the reason for their sudden request that I move in. When I told my in-laws the real reason for their behavior, they all appeared to become frightened. So what you indicate is that you want me to, or you're attempting to convince me to take care of him, huh? I asked, growing more and more frustrated and skeptical. One of you has to do it. Taking care of other people must irritate those of you who are too self-centered and only consider yourselves, right? They exchanged nervous glances as the room grew silent, anxiety high. They had obviously not anticipated my taking aim at their intentions in such a straightforward manner. What? When you're only a worthless wife? Are you attempting to offend us? Angrily, one of the sisters-in-law shot back. You're correct. You are really daring. You're merely a wife, the other person added, their voices rising with outrage. So am I not the wife any longer? I shot back, a hint of irritation in my own voice. Did you not catch what I just stated? Or are you chickens who forget what took place a few seconds ago so quickly? Their feelings seemed to be further stoked by my triggering. With every phrase, their anger increased. Enough now. I no longer give a damn. Why not simply file for divorce or something similar? Sophia and Emma said together, I want to never see your face again. All right, I'll take your word for it, I answered, 
becoming more determined. I started packing my things because I knew I had to get away from this poisoned place. As Liam and Karen realized how serious the issue was, they got frustrated and begged Sophia and Emma to retract their remarks. They were obviously aware of what would happen if I went ahead and got a divorce. After this heated conversation between my in-laws, I gathered my things and moved in the direction of the front door. Karen and Liam saw me and came running after me. Liam begged, Wait a minute, Olivia, his voice revealing his desperation. I'll force them to apologize for their remarks. Please let's put an end to this ridiculous divorce talk. Please look after my dad. Karen said in a pleading tone, Yeah, yes, please. Support your husband. It's finally possible for you to be a stay-at-home mother, which is beneficial for you. Sadly, I don't want to be a stay-at-home mom, I told my in-laws, who persisted in being self-centered to the end. And although you might not be aware of it, I make more money than Liam since I've advanced in the organization. Even though this apartment's rent was very expensive, most of it was paid for by my salary. That indicates that, despite all the derision and teasing, I had a better financial situation than this man, a member of your family. I waited for my words to really register, and I'm done talking about it. All right, goodbye. My in-laws looked dumbfounded as I turned and left the house, leaving behind a stunned quiet. I went back to my parents' house, hired an attorney, and made Liam's divorce official. Despite his obviously depressed appearance, he silently accepted the divorce. Karen, meanwhile, urged Sophia and Emma to look after their father, but they strongly disagreed and ultimately fled their duties. In addition, after her husband found out about her romance with another guy, Sophia had to pay a large sum of alimony. After running away from her duties, Emma, who had relied on Karen for expenses when she lived at her parents' house, found it difficult to adjust to living alone. She began to be late for work every day, and eventually, she was fired. After we parted, Liam moved back to his parents' house under pressure from Karen, because he was the oldest son. Even though Sophia and Emma were having trouble supporting themselves, they did not indicate that they would return, so Liam was the only one left to take care of his father. Liam became worn out and stressed with the stress of juggling his job and providing care. Now, under a great deal of stress, Liam and Karen started arguing all the time. Their loud arguments got out of hand to the point where neighbors began to complain frequently, which prompted police visits to see how things were going. The once close-knit family was now rocked by conflict and instability, as Karen dealt with the fallout from her children's disappearance and the tense family dynamics, while Liam struggled to keep up with the demands made of him. I'm now relieved to be away from the chaos my ex-in-laws generated and to live comfortably in a lovely apartment close to my place of work. I started looking into new interests, and I would rather not be in a relationship right now. I felt justified when I saw the struggles Liam and my ex-in-laws, who their neighbors called the crazy ones, had to endure. Despite Liam's controlling attitude and Sophia and Karen's arrogant outlook, my priorities are my own happiness and my hopes for a happy, meaningful existence.